Okay, so we're gonna put our buckle right here. That's our plan. And one thing I wanna clarify when we're doing our buckle distance, um, we put the tape here, and that's just to make sure that when we build our buckle, it's slightly longer than we might need um, because we can always cut it shorter. We can never cut it longer. It's always good to give you that extra distance but let's talk about the buckle anatomy real quick. There's um, a center bar, you have a prong, and a frame. Okay, and the frame basically prevents the strap from coming out, and the prong is meant to let you um, increment up or down in tightness. So you wanna make sure when you put this thing together, your leather has this contour of um, a hole, a slot, and another hole. Or if it's wider, like a one inch buckle, you can get away with two holes, three holes, whatever you find aesthetically pleasing. But the goal is to have the leather slide through your frame, overlap the prong so it fits through that slot, and then come back so that the two holes are in alignment. Okay, so you wanna capture your frame here and this one's called the center bar buckle, and that allows um, this extra material to act as a keeper. So when straps come through it, it holds them in place. So you'll notice that this is also another version of a center bar buckle. So when we go to do our design, um, generally when you have a buckle to cut the slot, it needs to be about the width of the strap that you're putting in. Uh, they make punches that do just that. So this is, you know, a one inch punch, right? It's just an elliptical punch. They make them in all sorts of sizes. So we've got three quarter and one inch. And um, interestingly enough, you can just put it on the edge of my material, right? So this is a one inch leather strap that I've cut and you can see that the the craft tool is the same distance. So generally when you're putting a buckle in, just the whatever the width of the strap is, is the length of your slot. But if you don't want to fork over $44 for one of these, I, t I totally get it. So we're going to show you how to do it with a whole bunch and some scissors, right? So the first thing we want to do is mark where we're starting. Right, there's the beginning. And then you can usually take your, your buckle and just say, okay, about as wide as that. Or you can take um, a section of your leather if you have it long enough and you can just lay it across to get your distance like so. Okay. And that's going to be the edge of your slot. So we have a line here and we have a line here. And now you can see where we want to punch our holes right there and there. So. When you go to punch your hole, you want to make sure that um, your prong or the little toggle fits into the part of the rotary punch that you're planning on punching your holes with. So what I'll do is I'll just go through and make sure that I find one where the prong fits firmly, right? It's not, I'm not jamming it in, but it's snug enough to where it'll go all the way in. And then I know I have enough room for the actual prong to pass through. So one more rotation, and then we can punch our hole. And again. And now with the scissors, right, we can just cut our slot. And The chisel works really well, right? The um, craft tool slot punch is a really nice way to get a clean line. But if you're not doing tons and tons of production leather work, and you've only got this, it works just fine. Okay, so now we wanna test and make sure everything fits. So what we need to do is slide <clears throat> our leather in and then make sure that the prong goes through and then we slide our leather back all the way through like so and 
and then make sure there's enough room for this whole center bar to do what it needs to. So we have plenty of room and now we know we can put our rivets wherever we choose. Um, I tend to like to put them right below the keeper. I think aesthetically that's a nice look. Um, so what I'll do oftentimes is I'll just line everything up and I'll take my silver pen and just sort of scribble on either edge so I know where I'm aiming. I'm going to put two holes in, one on either side. I think that's going to look nice, but that's something to consider here when we're attaching to um, the pauldron because we may want to put two holes in to mirror that same design. That's an aesthetic choice. So we're going to take apart the assembly. One thing you learn about armor is it's a lot of putting it together, checking everything, and then taking it apart, and then doing it all again. So now we want to switch the rotary punch to something that fits our rivet. So this is good for our rivet. And generally I'll draw the subdivision of where my target is. So I want to punch holes here and here, like so. And again, like so. So we've got our two holes right there and there. Okay. So now we can fold a leather strap in half making sure that the crotch of that slot lines up on both ends. And then you can just punch straight through with your other holes, knowing that you're going to get the overlap you wanted. There we go. And that's about all the material we're going to need on this end. So you can trim it off now or you can trim it off later. Um, I'm a big fan of doing the test assembly over and over and over until I'm absolutely satisfied I have what I want. So I'll just leave that through and then bring it back on the other side. Like so. Make sure your prong pierces through that slot that you punched. That's a nice satisfying lockup. And so now you want to check and make sure that your rivets will actually do what you think they'll do. <laughs> so make sure that you can get the post to come through. And last but not least, before you get too excited about your assembly, make sure that you can fit this on your anvil right, to do your, your hammering step. Um, oftentimes you'll find you're in such a, a tight cranny that you can't get the anvil to support your material. So at this point we're ready to go. We've got a nice fit. Um, it's behaving the way I'd like. And so we can just hammer that down. Anvil and hammer. So this is the tricky part. You've got to lay your material over the anvil like so. Then we get to watch the camera jump. And I've got my rawhide mallet. Okay. Right. And then again, line it up so you can see what's happening. Let's bring it over here. So I've got my buckle laying over the edge. I've got my um, 
tiny anvil on my larger anvil, and then I'm setting my punch right on that rivet. And we're good to go. Now, you can cut this now, you can cut it later, you can decide you want to add an extra rivet, but until you decide, you know, don't worry about it. Generally, I'll just leave this long until I'm done with my test fitting and do the final trim.